Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my Kun Bui. I'm a software engineer. I, I have been working with PHP around like um, nine to ten years already. Actually, I started uh, with learning PHP uh, earlier than that, but I officially working for a company since around like 2007, 2008. So around eight to ten years. Um, so today I will talk about the my ex. My experience uh, using PHP with Docker is um, my interest. And um, <coughs> a bit about me, uh, like I'm a start uh, learning LAMP stack in 2004 and office working on 2008. I like programming. I like learning new things and I like building things. And I also like photography, playing chess, traveling, trekking, and sport. I play uh, futsal every week, and it's open group. If you want anyone want to join, just let me know. Yeah, uh, we are very welcome. I'm also a father of a very lovely uh, daughter. Okay, about the Docker. Uh, the Docker is help you to build, ship, and run any app, and almost everywhere. They say everywhere, but uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, conflict. You cannot run, like for example, you cannot run the Intel architecture on uh, AIM architecture. And Docker is not a virtual machine like what we are talking about comparing to Vagrant. Uh, and you can see uh, on the screen here, the, diff the most Important difference is about the guest OS and the hypervisor. So it reduces the load for the host machine and it makes Docker is very portable, very lightweight, and run very fast. And currently, Docker is at uh, version 1.12 uh, and it's still in RC1. Um, Docker is available in natively in Linux and uh, in Windows OS, uh, currently the official support is uh, via Toonbox, which is the official version machine running on top of version box. And now uh, on uh, March of uh, this year, they introduced the native support for Windows and OS, but until now they are still in uh, beta. And um, previously, I think uh, two weeks, uh, two, week, two week ago, uh, they still in uh, private beta, but now they're in public beta, so everyone can tr download and try it on your computer. So uh, today I'm talk about the PP development, which uh, I I focus on four things only. First thing is how you run a PP project uh, with Docker, how you debug it, how you run tests and how you deploy it. I will mean, uh, do a live coding, which is cost me a, a bit uh, issue, so a bit delay until now. Okay, so here is my project. My, I will upload uh, the source code of the home project uh, to GitHub and share to everybody. So. Uh, for everybody, it's very convenient to follow. Uh, I use the uh, Laravel, which I think is people is very familiar with. Uh, um, I wanted to use uh, Symfony, but I think not. Uh, we are more familiar with uh, Laravel than uh, Symfony, so eventually I decided decided to use Laravel. So this is a demo app from La Laravel, which is uh, just very simple thing to do list. Yeah. The first thing is, this is a Docker container I'm running. Uh, and you can see I have two containers now. One is for the source code, the one is for database. So that is the idea of uh, Docker, they want to uh, they want us to separate all the component, so everything is slowly coupled to each other, so we can easy to scale, easy to upgrade. 
and this is a website. So as you can see, it's very simple thing. Just add and new. I can. <coughs> so you see, it works. So that is how you run the um, uh, PP application. So, so under the line, um, Okay, let me check. Okay, it easier to everybody. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, this is main thing of uh, uh, the Docker environment where you bootstrap and run on the Docker uh, container. Uh, the first thing is like the uh, project. I name it PPSG for PP Singapore, and I have some I have some mapping. Uh, I have some mapping uh, from my source my source folder here into var www, and I have a customized uh, nginx file for only for this project. So if you have another project, you can have another nginx file to override. This, so it's very convenient for us. And this line is, uh, I map the, loc uh, the host port to the local port. So I will access it in the, eight, uh, in the port 8000, as you can see here. And I link this container with the data, my database container here. So here I set up very simple application only. So my database is almost empty, only have database from the basic app. I will come up to this one later, but uh, the first, okay, I move this one up so it's easier. So the first, this is a two container. We are in the new version of PHP Compose, they call it service. So this is a two service we are using now, which is mapping to these two containers. Mm. Any question for running PHP application on Docker for now? Is uh, this the new native implementation or is this the native? This is the native. Yes. So I run, you can see here, I run everything directly from my Machine. Yeah. And this is the latest version. Yeah. So you can try it. It's very cool. Uh, I, I, I find it has a bad, uh, a bit uh, impact on the performance for the file uh, system. But uh, I think for development, it's fine for me so far. Okay, so let's go to the debug. The debug is a bit tricky part here uh, because uh, I don't I don't know why the um, Docker, the Docker native Docker, it doesn't have good support for. Um, for I, I don't know if it's only specific for the communication between the container and the host, but. For the doc, uh, for the debugging PP, right? We need to run a uh, X debug, and we need to run a server to listen to listening to the debug request. But the re the debug request cannot reach to the host uh, machine from inside container. But I found a fix for that, and I share with you my fix. This ones. So basically, this is my X debug configuration. So previously, the remote host, especially you specify as a local host, like 127.001, but I specify uh, another uh, local 
IP address here. And in my Mac, Oh, sorry. Window. Okay. In my Mac, I add a new alias to the local config here. So it, uh, by adding this alias, it can connect. I don't know how, but it works. So I just want to share well, what I found. For, so anyone want to debug, it's very easy. Another configuration is quite simple. You can specify the uh, port and specify the ID key here and inside your PHP storm you also specify the same thing okay you have a port here okay let's try it so basically if I reload this one uh, for example Usually, to try if debug is working, I open the index file, which is here, and I stop at the first line here to see. And make sure you enable and disable the X debug listening here. Otherwise, you won't get it. So this one is disabled. You have to enable this like this, so it's listening. OK, now if I reload this one, OK, boom. It's go here already. So from now, you can see, you can debug everything from here, what is the current variable, and you can go deep inside on that. And for example, I know if we go until here, for example, you know, this is a home page, right? So you can just go here, you stop here, and let's see what happened. Uh, you can just... Uh, just uh, skip, uh, jump from the first breakpoint to the second one by this button. And here, yeah, it stop here. Yeah. And from here, you can even see more from here. Like you know, uh, this is a route service provider. And you can even go further. Like if I want to go inside to this function, you can press F7. If you, if you step to the next function code, you use F8. So I'm, I'm going to this function. You see? This is a loader, auto loader from the platform. So you see from here, it started a, a new uh, eloquent query from here, which is We use for this call. So this one it triggers the cone uh, static uh, method, which is the magic cone. And from here, it will create a new query with this uh, to uh, for this function. See, it's go to the order by here. So by using, uh, uh, I, I think, okay, uh, how many people have used uh, using HDebug before? Oh, only one. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, also a good thing. So from here, you can see that uh, by using HDebug, you can easily to see all the parameters. You don't have to use like Vadam, Print R, or die or something with your application. So basically, you will never leave your debug code inside your production code, which is uh, prevent some accident. So try to learn uh, HDebug. It's very cool, and you will find it, it will uh, help you a lot. OK, this time out because we have spent a lot of time in debugging. So Nginx, I'll do time out after, I think, 20 seconds or 90 seconds. So if I run this one, and you see the frame, if frame is not available, that means the execution already done. So if I refresh this one, if I run it really fast, OK, let's go back here. 
So that is about debugging uh, mm, PHP application. Now you want to run a test for your application. I haven't created a new test. I'm still using the uh, default test from the demo application. Uh, this is more tricky part. So basically, uh, okay. Now I come back to the this part. Okay. Uh, can you see clearly? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. This part. So now, can you see now? Okay. So basically, this is by this is my image, Docker image. I personally built it just now. I can share it with everybody so everybody can can use it. So basically, uh, this uh, inside this container, I only have uh, on the PHP package enough to run the component, also the PHP unit library to run the PHP unit. And I also map the source file to the var www, so to make sure that uh, we have a source file to test it. And also, uh, this is command line to run the um, the test. And in order to test it, you can run this simple query. Okay, uh, CD. Okay, so first thing, in order to run the Docker Compose you have to go to the directory where the Docker Compose file located in. If you go to another directory, you, you cannot run it. So basically, I will go to to make sure that my Docker Composer is here. Okay. Okay, uh, Docker co Docker file is a file you div, uh, you use to for building an image. Shouldn't the Docker file use build an image? Yeah, let let me sh show you. Yes, so. I think I put it here. So this is a. Docker file to build the PHP unit. So uh, the good thing for the, the also the difference between the Docker and another uh, uh, virtual environment like Vagrant is like the Docker you can inherit from another image. So from now I inherit from Unpy uh, 3.4 here. So as you can see here. So this is already built image out there, public there on the, uh, yes, it's official image, but you can uh, extend from any image, not only the official, yeah. And I run some uh, command to add the PHP uh, library here, yeah, and prepare the environment here. And after I'm doing like this, I need to, this is a file to declare the, to instruct the, the way to build the image. After that, you need to run the command to actually build the image. So the command is similar like this. Uh, I think I increased the phone sign here so you can see it better. Yeah. Docker build. That's T is for tag. So when you build an image, you need to tag it or you need to label it somehow so you can easily find it later. So I will uh, label it Gigary PHP unit. Gary is my personal uh, dev team, so I use this only. So not meaning and not any meaningful here. Can you explain again what is tag? What's it? Uh, that's T. That's T. T for tag. T is for tagging. It's just a labeling. Yeah, so you label it. This is a 
PHP image belong to Gigari Group, and the tag uh, the version is 5.4.6. Actually, the tag is a 5.4.6. What Michael is doing is doing a namespace. So Gigari is a namespace, and the actual container name, uh, name that he's creating is called PHP unit. And the colon for after what comes after that is basically a, tag, a version number that you can tag, tag to this one. So usually, the, by default, it tags as colon latest. You yep. use the latest version of this thing. Good thing about what he's doing, okay, the tag will be arbitrary string. Yep. What he has done is that he has added a new space in the front, so it's easy for him to he can easily push up to Docker Hub. Later on, Docker Hub is like a place where you can download and share uh, Docker images. Am I right? Yes, correct. So he's done it, done it this way to kind of make it easier for the way you to push stuff and share it later. So uh, you know GitHub, right? So the structure of, uh, similar to GitHub. You have a namespace or user or a group, and then you go to the your repo name. This is exactly the same, but except on top of that, we have a tag or label. To this, uh, like to this commit, for example. So yes, it if uh, if you don't have uh, anything after this, it's auto tag at letters. Yes. I haven't pushed it, but later I can push it. Yeah, this is still local. Yeah. So if you don't have any tag, uh, tag here, it's uh, automatically add a letters. And but the best practice is you need to tag a version, the specific version here. So uh, you won't have any conflict later. Like for example, you use the latest version, but somehow maybe in next one month, uh, your author up upgrade the version to another, a new version. Uh, which is not uh, compatible with your current project, so it may break your project. So you need to specify the version uh, specifically uh, when you use this. Okay, I tag this folder and I point to the Docker file name, which is inside Docker and PEP unit. So you can see this Docker PEP unit is a part from here, Docker. PP unit here. You don't have to specify the Docker files, which is automatically added. And I run it. I already built it, so it runs very fast. So the thing is, like you can see, the step three, step four, step five. One step is one line you define in this Docker file. So if an, uh, at any step, if the if already built uh, before, when you rebuild it, it will not uh, even reuse the built version, so it don't have to run over and over. So, like for for example, if instead of using uh, being here, you want to put it in local. So only the last command will run. All the red is already built. It will reuse that uh, that uh, they call it intermediate. Containers, yeah. So you also caches things like your composer packages, right? Yes. You composer, you also do you, that. You do you run things like Docker, like a com um, composer install or something. You basically cache the vendor files for you as well. Yeah. And actually, you you can you can see all the image file here. On everything you see, none here, which is a uh, the none that means it's uh, failed to build previously. Yeah, so it has no name at all. So by default, it's none. So after that, it will reuse this uh, uh, this image to build another image. So it's very convenient. It's very fast for us as well. So uh, yeah, yes, I can clean. Uh, I can clean later. But if I rebuild it, if I delete everything, if I rebuild it, if Docker says that there's no uh, image built for this version before, then it has to run it again. So um, if you 100% sure you never uh, need it anymore, then you just delete it. Uh, okay, for all everything, like for example, if I know that this version 
is running fine already. And okay, if I test my application running fine already, I can just delete every none. So basically, from here I can just run Docker remove image, and I copy on the image ID here. Done. It's clean up. I can 100% sure that my uh, image is still running fine. So I just clean it up. And that is for Docker file. Uh, Docker file is for building image. And Docker Compose is for using image. Yeah. So the image I just built is inside here. So when I, build, when I create a container or create a new service, I need to define the image when I want to use for that image. I have another configuration like volume. I want to link this image to my SQL because later when I run the test, my test is also need a database connection as well. So I need to link it. Uh, all, all those things that happen here can happen in command line. So you can choose to Docker. Yes. Docker up and have all these other things. Yeah. This get as, as flags in the Docker command. But when you would compose, a Docker compose file, you have to declaratively set up the links and the, like, the files that is which, uh, uh, that is we go, that is we mapped into the instances and you can make them all speed up at the same time. Basically, you can speed up a whole group of this uh, Docker, Docker images. This kind of yeah. Sorry? Go top. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the name here is the um, service name. You can create a, an alias for that. So, for example, this one you can create a PHP MySQL here. The naming here or the alias name here will be used inside the PHP SG container. And it will be available, it will be used to connect the PHP SG container to the MySQL container. Okay, so for example, if I don't have this part, this will be the name using the PHP SG container. If I have this part, this will be the name using in PHP SG container. Actually, both this one and this one will be available. But the thing is, like for example, I have a multiple MySQL database, or I have a multiple PHP application. I want to uh, you because but my my default uh, my default configuration or my nginx configuration or sjproc configuration is point to PHP only. So basically, here I can define PHP SG one, PHP SG two. Or, for example, I can define here MySQL 1, MySQL 2. But from here, I still map it to MySQL. So I don't have to change my configuration. Yeah, even I can declare even more service. Essentially, what this does is it adds an entry in your EC host file inside the container. So internally, it refers to it by, say, PHP. MySQL actually refers to the other container in this list. By the name. So every Docker container is has their own IP address? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so basically So basically when you run a Docker, if you create a network, by default the net network name is default. And you have have a multiple type of network, you can implement your own network type. But currently have two types of network is bridge and overlay with uh built-in. And also uh by default, if you don't declare any network, it will use the default, the default network. And all of this will be inside the default network. And actually, from new version of Docker, I don't need to link here and here because it's automatically available it's within the same network. But for some reason, sometimes it may not work. So to be safe, include it in. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't tested it. Just now I test without this link, it failed. So for some, but previously, if I remove this one, I still can ping it. So to be safe, just include it in. 
And uh, yes, when you uh, create a new uh, create a new container, it will have uh, each container will have a dynamic IP address, so you cannot predict which IP address is that. And by using the the host name like this, is is make the development more convenient. Okay, so this is a uh, Docker Composer file. Um, in order to run PHP unit, I can I will use I will use this PHP unit service to run, which is run the PHP uh, unit uh, configuration here. Okay, before I run this, I want to explain a bit. So this is a command line. I want to run a PHP units, but after immediately the PHP unit service is running and stop, I, will, I want to remove it. So there's no uh, unused uh, container, unused service in my environment, just to make it clean. Okay, everything is running fine here. Okay, so just to uh, show you something, I, I want I, I will destroy everything on my environment, and I will show you it won't work, and then I will bring them up very quickly. Okay, so first thing I want. Okay, you can see we have two images here. We have two images here. Which is one is PHP SG, one is MySQL. Now I will delete these two containers. This is my shortcut function to delete it. So basically, it will delete two. I run, I list the, I use the same command here, docker ps, to list on container. <coughs> and we don't have anything here. Just to make sure that it works, actually, the command works, we go to the website. There's nothing here. Now I want to bring them up. Okay, I want to bring everything inside the, the Docker file up and run it at the daemon. So I can run another command. Okay, now you see it's run. But as you can see, previously we have two Docker container. Now we have three because I declared the PHP unit as well. But P oh. PHP unit. Okay. Because I, in the Docker file, I, I define three services. One is uh, MySQL, one is a PHP SG, and one is PHP unit. So that's why it's creating own three service. And after that, because the PHP unit is running and uh, exits immediately, so the status is exit. These two container is still running here. And now, okay, do you guess if I go, if I refresh this one, it's working? Yes. Not really. Okay, it's showing something work here. Good, but it's not, because it's database is not there. Yeah. That's why I say it's cap work, but it's not really working. So that is, I want to show you this one doesn't backup your database. So you need to have an, another strategy to backup your database and restore the database. One of the techniques is you create a share volume. The share volume will be used for all the database container. So when it up, it use the database it uses that volume. The volume will contain the data previously we used. 
So the data will be there even we destroy the containers. So because like this is a bit advanced topic, so I'm not talking it about here, but very easily uh, it, we can just go to the database, create the database. It needs some time to connect, and then. Yes, no, not de delete. In, I delete the containers. The data is okay. There are two concepts in Docker. One is image, one is container. Image is kind of like template, and container is the uh, actual runtime, is actual file you are using. Yeah. Yes, everything. Yes, so if if I vote, if inside, if inside this uh, MySQL, I have another volume, which the volume is used somewhere else. So, but after delete and create, uh, bring it back, it's still using that volume. So the data is still there. But because I don't do that for now. So it's a bit advanced uh, things, advanced configuration, so I don't put it here. So, but you can do a research on that. It's not so difficult. So MySQL is just, a, it's just like a research. Yeah. Like a uh, it's not like a process. It's actually a isolated environment. Run only MySQL service. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, I create a PP. I create a database here, and then I need to log in to the secure. Yeah, this one. Okay, the x the SQ uh, command is for ad hoc running to run ad hoc commands only. So after I access this one, this one will be gone. <clears throat> so I need to go to the. F you see, this is varw. The varw is the volume I'm mapping from here, from this, from this source folder. <clears throat> I go here. I will see the. The phone structure exactly like inside here. So this is way you are using volume is way you are communicate between the Docker container uh, and the host machine. <clears throat> and from here, I need to run the migration from Laravel, and that will make this work. Okay. So, if if you if you configure if you configure the database properly, and you make, you turn it down, bring it up, it's very quickly in just a second, compared to like a few minutes with the vagrant. Even you have a hundred of Docker container or hundred of service running on your local, everything is seen up and running in just a less than one minute. Usually, around like half a minute only. Okay, now about deployment. I usually I clean. I just clean it the PP unique container which is not in use, so it's clear for us now. So now <clears throat> I know that I have PP uh, SG5 uh, and uh, service and Maria uh, database service. Now I want to <coughs> deploy this app so I can use this in dev or in staging or in production. So basically once okay give me a second Okay, 
So basically, I need to copy the source file into var www folder. The source file, after I running the test, I make sure that my application is running fine as I expected. So I will copy all the source code to the var www which, uh, the, which we use uh, is uh, like system default. It's not the global, but we define that is as, as our default. So we copy the source code there, and then we need to remove this volume. Okay, uh, if you don't have this one, this volume uh, we create an empty folder inside the application inside the environment. So if any, if you want to work with the folder, it will not show any error like folder not found or something like that. So, so now if you add the source file to the folder already, you don't need the volume instruction. <coughs> okay. So after you copy everything from source folder from here, you need to, you build uh, this image exactly uh, like what I built before. And imagine you have image already, like from here, docker image. For example, I have everything here already. Now I want to deploy the Gigari PSG. So uh, there's two places you can deploy. You can, okay. You can, um, yeah. Just deploy your image file. By default, you can deploy to uh, Docker Hub. It's similar to GitHub. Yeah. And from there, you can pull uh, from anywhere. Another one is if you don't want to, you can implement your own uh, registry. So it's only like for if you really concerned about security. You implement the uh, the internal, the private registry, so only you can public uh, can push image to that registry, and or you can use a uh, Docker Hub. With, uh, you need to pay the subscription to use the private uh, private image. <coughs> Let me introduce a bit about the Docker Hub first. So this is Docker Hub is exactly like similar to like GitHub. I, this is my user, and this is my organization. <clears throat> and you can see inside my organization, I have I already have some uh, Docker image. Uh, let's call it repo. And then now you see from here, I don't have any PSG repo. You can see from here, I can go to the second one to make sure that nothing here. <coughs> okay, I go back to my local. The first thing, in order you push the uh, image into the, the Docker Hub, you need to log in first. And Docker Hub uh, have a support uh, the SSS key. So you need to log in uh, by your user and password. But it should be done only once. So I need to give in the user and the password. Okay, take a bit long. <clears throat> now, I want to push my image to Docker Hub. Okay, for example, from here you can see I have uh, latest tag here. But <clears throat> uh, manually, I can just put it like this. So it will push uh, this uh, image this tag to GitHub. But because latest is a default tag, 
so I don't have to do that. This one is 50 meg. It should be done in one or few minutes. Yeah. So, in the meantime, do you have any question? So I can answer. Between what? Virtual box. Virtual box. Oh, okay, virtual box is virtual machine. Docker is not virtual machine. Virtual box and VMware is virtual machine. Uh, it uh, simulate the host house host machine work, and inside a virtual machine, you need to install a guest OS. Yes. But in Docker, you don't need to install the. Uh, I'm going back. Here. Here. Okay. Can can you see it? Okay. <clears throat> so Docker is uh, okay. Docker container is just a combination of library and binary file enough to run your job. But for virtual machine. You need to have everything need to boot up the uh, the OS. Like for example, you want to install Linux or Windows here. You have you have to put everything inside that, and everything will run without even you don't really need it. So that will be very heavy. See, the guys put here one ton. <laughs> Uh, cluster management. What do you mean by cluster management? Uh, yes, actually, in Docker, in Docker world, we have a different type of they call it orchestration. Yeah. Uh, previously, Docker have a, a tool called Docker Swarm, and you can Docker you Docker Swarm to orche uh, orchestration and uh, another tool is Terraform. Terraform is for you to, it's similar to uh, Docker Compose. But Terraform, you can de declare and you can even create a new machine in AWS, in Google App Engine, Google, or Google Cloud, or another provider. <clears throat> another tool which is very powerful, is created and supported by Google, is Kubernetes. Yeah. Kubernetes, if you ha really have a lot of containers, Kubernetes is very useful for you to manage everything, all of them. You can monitor it, you can scale it every, very easily. So it's like one instance that is maybe. Sorry? Because in VMware, you have a command center, right? Yeah. You have one instance and command center that you can see everything. Is it the same for Docker? Yes. So there's the community you think. Uh, okay, so for it, different tools have different way to manage this. Uh, like for example, for Terraform, you have a text file to declare on the uh, instant. And for for example, for PHP, <coughs> for for example, you have a nginx and PHP, right? Nginx very lightweight. So if you have very high traffic, you want to scale PHP into five instant. You need you need to declare the uh, the scale number inside the uh, Terraform file as well. That is for Terraform. But for Kubernetes, you have a command line to do that. So you can scale, scale up or scale down. Yeah. But the nice thing about community is they call, I'm not sure what is the type like rolling update, right? So for example, you have a file <coughs> You are running PHP 5.5, right? You will want to upgrade to PHP 7. You have a 10 container running PHP 5.5. If you want to upgrade it, you upgrade to, actually you change the image. So it's enrolling one by one. It's not destroy everything and launch a new thing. So it's very convenient for you as well. It's almost transparent to user.
Any question? Okay. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, we can do it very easily. Uh, actually, for um, for WordPress, right? You need to have nginx. You need to have a PHP. Okay, nginx or Apache, and then you need to have a PHP, and then you need to have uh, MySQL Server, right? Okay. I don't use this. I use command line. But basically, uh, if if you want to put everything in one image, it's uh, it's not a good practice. Yeah, because like uh, the concept of the Docker, like they want to separate all the component. If the component is not really uh, coupled to to another one, then just keep it separated. So, for example, MySQL and PHP is not really connected. They can communicate over the TCP IP. Yeah, so just keep it separate. So basically, what I will do is I create a one container for MySQL, one container for PHP, one container for Apache or Nginx. I, I, usually, I use Nginx. So I have three containers, and I use the Docker Compose to compile them together. And later, if I want to bring it up, I just run Docker Composer up, and that's all. Yeah. Let's see if this one finished. OK. It's finished already. And now let's go to Docker Hub and check. Where is PHP SG? Okay, the last one, yeah. You have it here, you will click it. You see, we have, don't have anything at all. My collaborator should be me. And tag, here you see, we have a latest tag here. So basically, you see the Grigory PHP, PHP SG is the repo name. And the latest is a tag name. Yeah. So from here, you can define the listed or the version. So you can easily to manage this. Sorry? D, right? That's D for daemon or detach. OK, so like for example, if you don't have dash D, then after you run the command, you are still inside the command. Uh, so you cannot type an, an, any other command. Uh, it's not shut down, but it just hang there. If you type dusty, it will push it to the background, and you can continue your work. Uh, OK, so it, the question is, if you want to continue type more command after that or not, if you don't, it doesn't matter if you have type dash D or not. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.